Debbie here with Garden Style. So now we are in the month of June and I'm going to talk about all the things we can do, be doing out in the garden during the month of June as part of my Grow More in 24 series. So let's get started. First of all, kind of think of June as the three P's. Um, things that we need to be doing probably throughout the entire month of June. First one being pruning. Uh, all of your early spring blooming shrubs like rhododendrons, azaleas, lilacs, those are all things you can start to prune now. And don't wait too long. I would probably try to get those pruned before the end of the month of June and that way they have plenty of time to put on their new growth and set their buds for the following spring. Lilacs especially. I like to get to my lilacs as soon as I see that last bloom falling off the shrub because they can be pretty persnickety when it comes to pruning because um, they start setting their buds right away for the following year. And I personally have a lilac that I'm going to be taking about a third of it off this year because he just has grown so much and it's getting a little too tall. So I'm going to take a third of them off right now because he just now got done uh, putting out his blooms so that I can be assured of having twice as many blooms the following year. And pruning is a big deal. Don't be afraid to cut things back, um, shear them to the ground if you have to. I've had rhododendrons get, you know, turn into monsters and then they start to get really leggy where you have, you know, two or three feet of space between the leaves. When they get like that, just take a good look at it. And if you need to cut it in half, cut it in half. Uh, Rhodes really like to be pruned. And now, since I've been living here in the house and I've been able to keep my rhododendrons and azaleas maintained, they get thicker and thicker with each passing year. And then you'll find that you don't have that big, large spacing going on between the leaves on their branches. So pruning all your rhodes and azaleas now that they're done blooming is fantastic. Just get that done during the month of June. Um, perennials. You're going to find that your perennials, as well as annuals, are going to start to need deadheading. So, and by deadheading, I mean taking off all the old blooms, cutting down to the next set of leaves so that you can get the most mileage out of your flowers for the rest of the season. And that just leads me into my second P for June, and that is perennials. June is perennial month. This is the month where I'm usually planting the majority of my perennials. This is a good time to go in and visit your local nurseries because the perennials that you're going to find in there now are usually the type of perennials that can take you all the way until fall. Uh, most of them are long blooming throughout the summer so that way you can be guaranteed to have color going on in your garden or your containers till the end of the year. You know, September, October when they really start to slow down. Things like cone flowers, Russian sage, catmint, uh, echinacea, all of those types of flowers uh, will be showing up in your nurseries and you can get a nice collection of colors and it's just that time of the year where you can start adding things to your garden that will carry you through till fall which is usually September or October um, when our nights start to get cooler our days get shorter and they start sensing winter coming in and that's when they just naturally start to slow down and die back. Uh, the second or third P actually will be pests. Keep a real close eye on your plants. This is the time of the year where you, where you start to see slugs, aphids, spider mites, uh, caterpillars, beetles, you name it. All of those little pests will be out trying to ravage your plants. Now I'm an organic gardener so I don't like using a lot of chemicals in my yard and I find I only tackle the pests that I see or doing damage to my plants. I don't spray ahead of time or anything, only when I see damage. I can tolerate a few holes in my plants. Uh, it doesn't bother me a bit and I don't, you know, get excited or go running for uh, the spray as soon as I see that there's a few holes in my plants. But when I see it's continuing or it's starting to spread to my other plants, then I start to pull out the big guns and I give them the spray. Uh, what I've noticed already, uh, here we are in June, is aphids. They're already appearing on the plants. You wonder where the heck they come from. They just do. They can fly, so they'll end up landing on your plants. So start keeping a real close eye for pests. The sooner you can get to them before they really start to ravage your plants, the better. Um, 
slugs of course is another one we just got over another atmospheric river this past weekend it was you know blowing sideways rain all weekend long so i actually lost a weekend where i was able to get some things done out in the yard so now i'm gonna be playing catch up this coming week as we go into a mild heat wave uh, we're actually going to go right into the 80s this coming weekend which is fantastic um, just means i can get out in the yard and get all sorts of things done but uh sure set me behind i'm sure it set you folks behind too who live up here in the northwest and a little bit of damage to boot uh, from the winds that we received but you know it is what it is so keep an eye out for pests for sure and if you're not sure how to tackle them or what to use for them um, there are two if not three things that i keep in my gardening arsenal at all times and one of them is captain jack's dead bug i find it's very effective you can use it for the aphids spider mites um, beetles all sorts of different uh, pests that want to chew or suck the juices out of your plants and that's usually what i pull out um, of course i'll flash a picture over here for you so that you can see what that looks like the second thing i keep in my arsenal is copper fungicide uh, you may notice especially with the rain and the damp weather that we've had that you may see black spot or mildew or some sort of powdery fungus starting to show up on your plants powdery mildew I'm noticing already is starting to show up on plants you can treat them with a copper fungicide it has copper in it which is a natural uh, element within the spray uh, that keeps powdery mildews and black spot things like that from appearing and if they're already on your plants then I would recommend trying to pull as many of the infected leaves off as possible uh, clean up the ground underneath your plants so that it's not continuing to splash back up on your plants and then treat the leaves uh, over and underneath the leaves with a copper fungicide. And of course, I'll put that over here as well so you can see what that looks like. And treat the ground as well. Um, there are spores flying through the air all the time that are landing on our plants. Most plants are resistant to them. But if you have a plant that's suffering or is struggling a little bit or it's just the conditions are just right, you may see powdery mildew black spot and some of these other lovely funguses that we're blessed with here in the northwest starting to appear on your plants the sooner you can get ahead of it the better it's not going to hurt them it just looks really bad <laughs> really bad and uh vegetables too um and usually i have an issue with powdery mildew showing up on my squash leaves and such towards the end of the summer when the air is dry and um they're stressed a little bit from the heat um, plus they're putting out fruit so powdery mildews funguses are famous here in the northwest and the sooner you can get ahead of it the better so that's your third p for pests slash diseases or funguses that you can stay ahead of now some other things we can start to look for here in the month of june of course is weeds darn weeds we get three or four days of solid rain and what is that going to do that just gets the weeds sprouting You'll notice you have a lot less problem with weeds during the summertime when you're not getting rain all the time. And I so look forward to that time of the year, which is usually July, August, September <laughs> for us here in the Northwest. We can pretty much count on getting into our dry season. But meanwhile, weed control is really important. So if you haven't put mulch down, I always say put the mulch down. But I also have gravel areas here in uh, my yard. You can put down pre-emergence like cream or you can just go through and spray the weeds um, and kill them back before they start to go to seed and create even more so weeds is another issue that we're going to be running into during the month of june watering as we start moving into june and going into july we're going to get less and less rain as we go into it so it's really important that if you have an irrigation system that you check on that make sure it's set up and raring to go uh, maybe you want to install an irrigation system. Believe it or not, I've been in my home for almost 10 years and I still don't have an irrigation system put in. Doesn't mean I water everything by hand, but I do have a lot of soaker hoses and I set sprinklers in strategic areas <laughs> of my yard to keep things hydrated. So watering will definitely become an issue, especially with this weekend coming up. We're getting into the 80s and it is absolutely amazing how fast things can dry out. 
if you've provided good drainage for your plants or they're out in a real hot sunny area we only received maybe an inch an inch and a half of rain uh, this last weekend even though it rained all weekend in order to do that and that doesn't even come close to soaking the ground so watering keep an eye on that of course your hanging baskets those are things and your pots your containers are all things that are probably going to need water at least once a day uh, as you start getting into the 70s and the 80s okay so that covers a big portion of the to-do list for June pruning planting your perennials pests and diseases weeds and watering and that's pretty much it I also encourage you to just sit back take a deep breath and enjoy all the hard work that you've put in to your garden so far this year and there's still plenty more to go um, I wanted to let you know that in my following videos coming up for the month of June I want to go over some drought tolerant plants um, as we start moving into the summer and that'll include drought tolerant perennials for both the Sun and the shade as well as shrubs um, lots of drought tolerant shrubs out there that don't require daily watering once they're established and some new varieties that I want to introduce you to as well that you may not have heard of yet so and that's always the fun part for me is introducing some new unique plants that you don't see every day um, that should do very well here in our Northwest Gardens all right you guys so there you are that is your do list for June pretty simple if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those in the description box down below. You can also take advantage of our newsletter at sunnycrestnursery.com or send me an email to gardenstylenwest at gmail.com. And you will notice I'm going to be popping in some videos uh, throughout the month with a new person that I'm collaborating with, and her name is Kendall. And we've already put out a couple videos already. Um, she's from Kendall's Greenhouse. And she popped in on me about a month or two ago, and we've kind of been getting together when we can to go over plants. Um, and it's really fun to have someone uh, with you doing some of these videos because she starts to ask questions, things that I haven't thought of um, that need answers. But I definitely encourage you folks to start leaving me some questions because as we get into July and August, and the planting starts to slow down and the watering starts to pick up I would love to get some more questions from you folks and I'll start picking from the list and I'll have a Q&A at least once or twice during the month of July as well as August while still covering plants uh, maintenance and things we can be doing in the garden all right everybody I hope you're enjoying your spring I am so looking forward to this weekend the weather is supposed to be fantastic your nurseries still have plenty of plants to choose from so get out there and pick some up all right you guys keep those hands dirty and we will talk soon bye for now